This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter live from the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. This is the show where we talk to people in and around indie wrestling and beyond and uh, talk about the love of wrestling, talk about other things around wrestling, not just wrestlers themselves, but again, people kind of working around the business. Of course, myself, a video producer here in the Pittsburgh area with the uh, local IWC and RWA promotions, and of course, doing work with Sorgatron Media and IndieWrestling.us. You can check out this show on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. Drop us a line at goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 if you have any idea who you want us to talk with. Uh, today's uh, interview was actually a suggestion uh, by somebody out there. Uh, so thank you, Jesse the Mark, actually, for hooking this up. And, of course, uh, uh, support us on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. You guys are helping make the world go around here um, on uh, this show. So uh, I got a very special guest this week. He is a former Young Lions champion with Chikara and, uh, of course, uh, involved with a big event coming up that we'll talk about, Break the Barrier 2017, as well as Powerbomb.tv. Vin Gerard, Gerard Derling, joins us on the line today. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? All right. And, uh, and of course, we have a live, live chat room. If you guys have any questions during this, uh, please uh, drop them in there, and we'll work them into the show as well. Uh, so... Um, well, we, we kind of have a little bit of an icebreaker here on the show uh, mm-hmm. to get people in, in, into this. Of course, people working around the wrestling industry. So the first question is, like, kind of what is your uh, earliest memory of pro wrestling? Huh. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's my earliest memory, but I think one that maybe some people can relate to if they grew up in the 90s era of pro wrestling. Is, um, you know, the internet just started becoming a thing. You know, you can go on the internet and uh, be on AOL group chat rooms and things <laughs> like that. Um, but what I would use, what I used to do was uh, every Monday, my mother would go shopping at the grocery store. And uh, I, I'll never forget, you know, going to the grocery store because I would immediately end up just shooting over to the magazine aisle. And I would just read, I would just sit there on the floor and read back to back, like front <laughs> cover to back cover, each of the like PWI or insider wrestling, or uh, they had wow wrestling for a little while at the stores. You know, I would read all of those magazines cover to cover um, just to kind of see like what else is going on. And I remember uh, distinctly seeing like there was an article about WXW, which is uh, the Wild Samoans. Uh, wrestling uh promotion out of uh, hazelton pennsylvania and uh I, that was like my first time of finding out that there was like local indie wrestling uh so that that was kind of cool and uh uh another another one would be like a similar supermarket story is uh our local paper is the sunday dispatch and i i remember seeing uh leonard f chakarison's brother uh tony sposto on the cover of the sunday dispatch because he was going to go to school at the wild samoans uh so uh and he lived like you know maybe 10 minutes away from me so those are like my first uh exposures to like holy shit there's local indie wrestling or like local professional wrestling near me um because like i live in northeastern pennsylvania where like wrestling like and that time period just didn't exist other than like wwf coming through to the cyc and scranton like once every year or so you know so uh, that's long-winded short sh- uh, long-winded story there for you but that's uh uh that's my first memories that's awesome it, it was at that point it was at that point that you kind of like is that where the first like maybe i could get involved with this kind of idea came from uh from fan to 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 becoming a wrestler yeah, I think I think, you know, uh, I kind of grew up through the age of the Internet, you know, as it, as it grew older, I was growing older with it. And uh, I think, you know, knowing that those uh, area promotions existed kind of gave me that hope that there was the possibility of doing more or getting more involved with uh, indie wrestling groups. Um, my first uh, exposure to like actually being at an indie wrestling show or like having training was uh, I was 14, and I went to uh, Jersey Championship Wrestling in Lodi, New Jersey, New Jersey, and uh, 
I got to train with uh, Loki, uh, which would, <laughs> as I'm saying these names, I'm realizing it's kind of funny. Loki, Billy Real, and Judas Young were the trainers for like a, a youth mini camp. Uh, and, uh, low key chopped the shit out of me at 14 years old, you know, like it's probably a crime now looking back at it, but, uh, yeah, that was definitely, definitely the first exposure to seeing that there's opportunities nearby that, you know, could be explored. And I definitely did. So how, cause I remember how intimidating low key was when I, I first had the opportunity to meet him at like, Oh no, I don't know. 28. How, how scary is he to a 14 year old? Well, I had I had seen him on like Jacked, you know, like yeah. the WWF. You yeah. know, he was right around that time he was doing those stints. So like, I saw him on TV and thought really nothing of him, you know, because he looks so small next to all these other guys, you mm-hmm. know. So then I see him in person, and I'm like, oh man, maybe he'll be cool to me because I saw him on TV and I remember seeing him on TV, and maybe he'd appreciate that. Uh, you know, somebody recognized him from the WWF show and how cool I thought it was, but. uh yeah, he's bigger than, you know, he looks on TV, uh, especially because I was 14 and probably like 100 pounds. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he didn't care. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it, 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 tur- it turned pretty quickly towards like, oh, this guy is pretty intimidating. Uh, and then like to find out we would do a chop line and he'd chop everybody. Yeah, that kind of sucked. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty. I mean, I'm, I'm more intimidated by him now uh, hey, <laughs> as, an, as an adult, but uh, <laughs> I feel like a low key uh, lead chop line is like the pro wrestling version of a scared straight program. Oh yeah, it was. It wasn't. Uh, I mean, it, <laughs> looking at the other people involved in this, this was like right after like Charlie Haas and Russ Haas had just got signed at the WWF, uh, and uh, yeah, it was. It was just a lot of like. It was a lot of people that like were backyarders, you know, getting their first exposure in a, a real independent wrestling environment. So probably everybody there deserved to get chopped pretty hard, you know, but mm-hmm. uh, I'll say I didn't, but I was a backyarder too. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's, that's what everybody yeah. did in the 90s, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, from there, of course, you had a, a stint here with Chikara and uh, you've kind of uh, uh, come come around to to working, I guess, on the other side of things uh, in, in production. I see you know, even you have your own kind of uh, uh, video marketing production uh, uh, company up there in Wilkes-Barre. Uh, so, so can you talk a little bit about that transition from being a wrestler for, for years and deciding to, to work that other side? Sure. I mean, uh, even before I, I wrestled, um, I, uh, started to, uh, st- I started a wrestling news website, um, where I'd go out to local shows with some friends and then we'd do results, uh, online and, uh, you know, we'd type up our little reviews and put them out there and, Mike Quackenbush was always like super supportive of, of us. Like, you know, we would go to the shows and, uh, we'd be sitting in the audience and he knew who we were and he would like call us out by name. Like to, like when he's like going to the ring to wrestle, it was kind of cool. Um, but the reason I bring that up is, uh, wrestling like that type of experience kind of uh, looking back on it, it, it taught me how to build websites. Um, like I, I wouldn't have learned how to make websites if it wasn't for the fact that I wanted to make this wrestling news site. And, uh, shortly thereafter, I ended up getting my first, uh, real world, uh, business gig, making a website for a company that did, uh, therapy services and they paid me $300. So like at 16 years old, getting paid $300 was like, oh, shit, I don't have to do anything for the next three months, you know? Um, but I ended up buying a digital camera with that money and, uh, then I would go out to shows and ask indie wrestling promoters if I can like photograph their shows. And, uh, they were letting me do that. So like before I even started training, I kind of was already doing stuff that's not necessarily the same, but similar, um, you know, going to shows and trying to help out however I could with behind the scenes type of things. So that, that was more of an interest to me than, than wrestling itself. Um, but of course, you know, there was that itch that needed to be scratched too. Um, so, uh, I did that. And then, uh, I, uh, I ended up 
uh, as they as it's worded is retired from uh, wrestling, even though I, I don't really recall ever getting like any sort of pension or uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, any, no, any, you, you didn't get get some uh, Chikara symbol gold watch leaving or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing, <laughs> nothing of note that I can recall other than like some concussions. Mm. Um, but uh, no, I, I ended up leaving because um, I had some other opportunities come up outside of wrestling that. At 25 years old, it kind of felt more like um, in wrestling, I wasn't really uh, moving forward. I was just kind of moving in the same path, and I was just kind of uninspired and a little bit bored and just kind of over some things in wrestling. Um, so uh, I, I stepped away because of, of some business opportunities that came up, and uh, those business opportunities led me down to uh, starting a, a video marketing company, as you had mentioned, called Cole Creative. Um, and uh, from there, it kind of led right back into wrestling somehow. Um, I started working with uh, Chikara a little bit uh, with their uh, Chikara Topia service uh, and helped them do some live streaming uh, out of the, the Wrestle Factory. And then um, my buddy Adam Lash had mentioned that he wanted to start a wrestling network uh, using some of his uh, uh, some of his connections in Lucha Libre as well as throughout the United States um, to kind of help bridge a gap in uh, wrestling on an independent level. Um, so uh, when he, he brought that up, I kind of was in a position where I was doing similar things that you know I thought I can help with. So. It's kind of how it came all the way back around to where we are now. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Of course, we're, we're talking about Powerbomb TV. Um, there is a lot. Of course, Jakarta TV or Jakarta Topia is, is one of those kind of streaming services. We have our WWE network, and it seems like there's, there's a lot of them out there. So what makes Powerbomb TV different from um, all the other ones on the table? Um, I, you know, I think, I think that's something that we personally have struggled with, uh, over the last couple of months of seeing what, like, where, where we fit in this, because like you said, there are a lot of different, uh, services that exist. A lot of them focus primarily on one particular, uh, promotion for the most part. Um, and, and you get to a specific critical mass, it kind of makes sense to start your own network. Like, uh, Chikara has been there for a couple of years. Um, you know, um, so I think what makes us a little bit different is, um, you know, we're, we're trying our best to utilize what resources we have available to us to better independent wrestling. And I don't mean that just from like a financial standpoint, because personally, I don't have a million dollars like other companies do um, to just throw at somebody, you know. Uh, so like we have to be creative, much like they need to be creative with, you know, keeping to a budget that they, you know, have to run an independent wrestling show. Um, but we do have these video marketing services available that we can assist with uh, spreading the, the stories that these companies are trying to, to put out and uh, to get new eyes on them. Um, our idea is to partner with as many of these minor league independent wrestling groups as we can because everybody needs a place to get started. Um, you know, like anybody that's in the WWE now that has some sort of uh, in the, like internet following is probably somebody that came from the independent wrestling scene who started, you know, not in Evolve, uh, not in Ring of Honor, but like, you know, your local regional independent wrestling group. Um, so we're working a lot with those types of groups to kind of help them uh, get more eyes on their product by working together with them all versus like trying to like create these rivalries and stuff. Um, we just want to try to spread as much as we can to everybody as possible. Um, so I think like this uh, upcoming event we have break the barrier is kind of our first attempt at kind of showcasing that, um, leading up to this, we've had, you know, some success on getting promotions involved with us. And then, you know, some promotions just kind of turned on us because, you know, we weren't, guaranteeing them thousands of dollars a month, you know, where other companies might have had those op offers on the table at some point in time for them. Um, we're just trying to create a platform where everybody has the opportunity to get more exposure, get more eyes on their product. And, uh, you know, and in return, once like you, we start seeing higher subscriptions come in, sure, we'll offer more, you know, more to the promotions that we're working with, especially the ones that have worked with us since, since this thing started. So, Absolutely. And, and of course, working here locally with the promotions that we do is, is that exposure kind of thing, like where 
where where do you where do you kind of move that bar right and and, and get in front of more eyes uh, so it's really interesting the, uh, the way that that works. And, and of course there's old models like the old smart marks and the high spots and everything like that. Uh, but, uh, but it, it, it's something I always struggle with, as you talked about, like, you know, does it make sense to do your, like, not everybody's Chikara, right. That can probably support their own, their own promotion, uh, streamer like that. So, um, tell, tell me a little bit more about, uh, break the barrier. Yeah, so uh, Break the Barrier is kind of our response to trying to figure out how to, to kick, kickstart what we're doing with Powerbomb TV. Um, we have yet to do our first official live streaming event exclusively through Powerbomb TV. So that's kind of uh, what our, our angle here is with this on the Sunday, July 11th, or Sunday June 11th, um, is to make this our grand opening event. Um, our first time live streaming exclusively through Powerbomb TV in the hopes that we will be launched to Roku as well um, for that date. Um, Apple TV, um, I believe we just found out that we we work on Chromecast as well as on PlayStation 4 browser. Nice. Um, so the idea is kind of like uh, kind of a, a nod to an event that happened in 1999 um, by uh, Al Isaacs from Scoop Wrestling, which... Um, Back in those days, you would see like wrestling posters littering audiences uh, at Monday Night Raw, you know, like with like the the dirt sheet website that they want you to visit. But Scoops Wrestling was one that was pretty predominantly placed at, at shows. Um, and uh, they put on an event back then in 99 called Break the Barrier, which was literally them getting 12 different independent wrestling groups together to put on a, a super show uh, in 99 at the ECW Arena. Um, so when Adam and I were talking about, you know, putting on this event, we both kind of like in the back of our minds, I believe had the idea that we'd like to call it break the barrier. Uh, but neither one of us wanted to actually openly admit it because I don't know, it's just, I, I guess like we both kind of were hoping to come up with something else, but it, it really made sense to call it that just because like, like I'm saying, like a lot of indie wrestling groups, are going out and creating their own streaming service and hoping that they can get more than 50 subscribers or whatever to, mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is, is if we all work together and create something that's, um, more open to like, it, it's getting, it's getting difficult for independent wrestling fans to make decisions of what company's streaming network I want to be a part of. Um, because, $10 a month adds up, you know, if you're going to have 10, <laughs> five to 10 different subscriptions, like it's, it's, it's a bit expensive. So our, our, our hope is that, you know, seeing what we're doing, people will realize that we're trying to put a showcase and a spotlight on as many different indie groups as we can. Um, and break the barrier, you know, I think we, be I believe we have right now nine different indie groups involved with us. Uh, and then we have our own specialty matches that we've put together just from our own, uh, you know, independent wrestling fandom, you know, of things that we see that we wanted to see happen. Like, uh, for an example, Cole Cabana uh, versus Orange Cassidy. Um, Orange Cassidy being uh, probably one of the more underrated <laughs> and unseen comedic wrestlers uh, on the independent wrestling circuit right now. Um, and we wanted to give him the opportunity to see what he can put together with Cole Cabana and that type of match. Uh, and then we also have, um, you know, a, a match that was actually put together by the performers wanting to put this match on, uh, Deshaun Pratt, who's formerly Amasis in Chikara, uh, is going to be taking on Ophidian, who, uh, the two of them used to be a tag team in Chikara called the Osirian portal. And, uh, they wanted to have a, uh, a canvas basically to put on a match um in, in the way that they they want to with no restrictions um and just kind of go out there and do what they they want to do um so um i think more than anything like break the barrier to us is something that we want promotions to take quite literally uh to give the talent the wrestling promotions the ability to break some barriers and make a name for themselves in front of new eyes and new audiences that's awesome. I also see uh, some other familiar faces. Uh, the Carnies we just saw here in IWC, a great match that they had at Aftershock. Uh, Ricky Ray is, of course, Cortez Casso in uh, Lucha Underground. 
Uh, so it's a really it, it, it looks like it's going to be a fun show and a lot of new names. I'd be interested to see uh, how they do as well. So I, I'm loving the concept. And, and, and this is, you know, I, I don't know how long, how often I, I, I hear the stories of wrestling promoters that just don't work together. And, and it's great to see something actually pulling them together. Yeah, it, it hasn't been easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. Uh, uh, some of these matches have been quite complicated to uh, get going. Um, we st- you know, we, we have uh, a match still to be announced from the Women's Wrestling Revolution, um, which is like the sister company to Beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, that match is still coming together. Um, the Lucha Tag match has changed probably 30 times in the last month. <laughs> uh <laughs> for one reason or another uh and uh like some of them some of them have been quite stressful to get to get going especially the the international ones just because you know there's there's more than just flights involved in that you know like uh and originally when when we we're putting this together i thought northeastern pennsylvania is probably a great spot to have a wrestling show because it's pretty conveniently located between new york city and philadelphia However, that also means that we have to arrange for drivers to go pick up talent from airports at New York City or in Philadelphia at different times and different <laughs> different exit times from the show. So, like that side of it has been kind of complicated. I, I've never run a wrestling show before. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I uh, back in the early uh, days of Chikara, I helped run some of the Pittston shows uh, at the Staircase in Pittston when they did a uh, Tag World Grand Prix there. Um, and, uh, but I wasn't so hands-on with, uh, you know, booking the talent, um, as I am with this, um, Adam's been very, very helpful with lining up like all the Lucha talent, but ultimately it's on me to figure out, you know, how they're getting to the airport, uh, uh, from the airport to the show where they're staying, you know, some of them are coming in three, four days early. So like, where the hell are they going to go? You know, it's like, these are still some, uh, questions that need answers uh and uh it's definitely opened my eyes to uh first not really wanting to do my own wrestling shows all that much (laughs) uh but but also like giving a new respect to like the wrestling promoters that are out there doing this monthly or even like six times a year or even two or three times a year uh it's it's an insanely uh time consuming and uh like i run my own internet marketing company that is is growing and uh this has taken up a lot of my time um and uh i'm just like thinking now like you know it's it's given me a first-hand look at what a promoter goes through and where we might be able to uh help them in the future with what we do with powerbomb tv um but i won't say like this is the last time we'll do break the barrier i'm hoping to see how this goes and maybe this becomes like an annual festival for us That'd be great. And I'm looking at the site and I'm seeing some pretty novel things here. Like, uh, it looks like you're you, for annual subscribers, uh, uh, you're, you're giving complimentary VIP seating uh, for themselves and a guest, um, which is something that I don't think I've heard before, at least on an indie promotion side. Yeah. So, um, we really just like kind of wanted to give our thanks to the people that kind of signed up with us early, you know, um, we want them to be a part of it because like we wouldn't be at this point right now if it wasn't for them giving us a chance, like and putting some money into what we were doing. Like it helped, helped us get past our hosting bills for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, we wanted to give them the opportunity to be a part of the event in person. If they lived within a reasonable distance, you know, to, to actually come out to the show and, and put them out there first row. Um, if, if they were available to come out. So yeah, annual, annual subscribers are getting the, the biggest out of anything. You know, we're giving them front row tickets, um, with a guest. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you're a, uh, monthly subscriber, you also get a, a general admission, uh, ticket for the event. So, um, we did just like yesterday, see like a, a whole bunch of people just sign up and reserve. I'm not sure if something happened in the last couple of days that people saw, or if it's just like they just logged in and saw that opportunity available to them. So, um, no, I really appreciate, you know, our subscribers, uh, being a part of it. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that that will change. I think that moving forward, if we ever do an event like this again, that, that, that'll stay there as something, um, for our subscribers to be a part of. That's awesome. That's awesome. It sounds like a great event. I love seeing events like this come together and uh, just new opportunities for people to experience different indie wrestling and and for indie wrestling 
to get out there. Um, so, hey, want to close it up with a couple of our usual questions here. First of all, uh, what are you watching these days? What what has kind of got your attention in in pro wrestling, indie wrestling, uh, wherever you might be watching it? Hmm. Um, I admittedly watch WWE uh, less and less, um, and I, I don't really know why. I think it's like at a point now where it's more exciting than ever since like friends, personal friends, are on TV, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm not really sure why why that's the case. Um, but um, the the more that we get involved in the promotions that we're working with, I guess the more I'm kind of starting to watch their product more to see if there's opportunities for us to help them. Uh, or even particular performers with them. Um, we just uh, started getting old wrestling on uh, Powerbomb TV, which uh, if you've never seen old wrestling before, it's like kind of the perfect example of like all uh, different styles of professional wrestling that exist. So like uh, you might be more familiar with like Evolve's hard hitting style or, you know, in Lucha Libre, it's more known for uh, high flying because of Rey Mysterio, Sicosis, Juventud Guerrera coming to America and putting that on showcase. But you dig a little deeper, you start seeing that in Lucha, you know, there's a, a huge technical influence, um, and as well as like a brawling style. Um, C4 wrestling in Canada is another one that, you know, uh, I personally had wrestled for when I was uh, actively doing that. And they put on like some stellar matches as well that have gone under the radar for quite some time. And we're really thankful to have them a part of what we're doing. Um, but for me, like uh, I'm more starting to get towards like the comedic style of wrestling because I, I kind of like the lighthearted and what pro wrestling uh, is to me is more story driven and kind of over the top. Um, anything with uh Dawn Castle is of interest to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, um, but uh, no, I, I'd say like uh, it's more, you know, uh, I don't want to say <laughs> that I don't watch other types of wrestling, but anything pretty much on Powerbomb TV now is something I've been, you know, more more inclined to watch just because it, it's there and available to me to t- check out. Um, Top Row Promotions, they run pretty regularly out of the Northeast um, and they have some pretty incredible talent there as well. Um, it's just been kind of like, for me, it's become more, uh, uh, interesting because it's like this talent, these talents that aren't in the, the major indies, uh, as we, I guess, kind of traditionally call them, um, that are pretty great. And they're just, they just are in these regional divisions of independent wrestling right now. Um, just kind of cutting their teeth there. And, uh, that's really been exciting to me to find all these new uh, uh, talent and performers that are out there, similarly to like going to the supermarket and picking up the magazine and reading cover to cover and seeing all these new names I never saw before. You know, it's that's what Powerbomb TV is kind of brought to me now. So um, it's kind of cool. It's back to that feeling again. That's awesome. Uh, and of course, you, you, you've dealt with uh, uh, several different sides of indie wrestling. Here, you know, we talked a little bit about some of the stuff you're dealing with uh, uh, promoting your own show. Uh, what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling for you? Oh, uh, man. Um, the best and worst. I, I think um, the worst is when you're not, as a performer, you you aren't yourself. Um, and, and by that, I mean... Somebody that's, you know, like we, I see it a lot on like the regional Indies because we watch that a lot now is, you know, a lot of guys that emulate, um, guys that are in the major independent wrestling groups or even on WWE. Um, and that's cool. You know, like if, if that's your dream is to just kind of like be the regional superhero, you know, emulating Stone Cold Steve Austin for an example, like a dumb example. Um, so, uh, but, but I see a lot of younger guys that, you know, are pretty good in the ring and they just don't have an idea yet of what their personality is or like what direction they want to take with their character. Even though, like, like I said, they have all the technical skills there. They just, when I watch them, I'm like, ah, oh, you're kind of trying to be Chuck Taylor. <laughs> and, uh, there's only one Chuck Taylor, you know? Um, so like that kind of bugs me. That's something I don't really like is when somebody doesn't realize like, 
what you're trying to be, you know, sometimes is just a, an extension of yourself. Um, you know, something that's, you know, not your nine to five job, you know, how you are there, but something that you can step outside that comfort zone and be a performer and be unique about what you're doing. Um, that's something that bugs me. Um, things that I, I like about independent wrestling though, is the opposite of that is when somebody embraces that and, uh, steps outside their comfort zone. Um, uh, myself in particular, I can't thank independent wrestling enough for getting me outside my comfort zone. Um, I used to wrestle under a mask and I probably shouldn't have been in a wrestling ring at that point in my life. I was probably too young and too green to be in a wrestling ring, but I was. And, um, looking back on it, I, I think a lot of, uh, the struggle with that character I was performing as was, I was so intimidated to be in the ring with the people I was in the ring with, you know, I wasn't ready yet. Um, I just, uh, uh, seeing through a mask is very difficult as well, you know? Um, so, uh, once that mask came off and I had the opportunity to do something different, um, I remember being incredibly scared about it because, what if it just ended up exactly like this other thing did? But, uh, I, I embraced the fact that I'm kind of a miserable human being and, uh, it, it ended up being quite successful, uh, in comparison. So, um, I think that, uh, for that independent wrestling for me got me out of my comfort zone and, uh, definitely helped me grow up as a human being, um, and understanding how to engage audiences and, uh, just created a lot of new opportunities for me. And I think that as an independent wrestler, that's something that we sometimes take for granted is all these networking opportunities that are created because of all the different people you get to meet, uh, including like now, you know, uh, this episode was set up by Jesse, you know, mm -hmm. um, who, uh, you know, connected you with me, um, which, you know, it, it wouldn't have happened without, you know, doing some networking, um, so, um, that's, that's probably one of the, the greater gifts of independent wrestling is the opportunities that it creates, um, whether it be directly related to wrestling or indirectly and helping outside of that with, uh, real world, uh, work opportunities as well. That's awesome. Also, how's the bowling game? I was watching a very interesting video before <laughs> this interview from, I think wrestling is. See, I, I, I guess, I guess that's a, a really good example too, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, that, that was, uh, interesting event. Uh, uh, I haven't, I haven't bowled probably in, uh, competitively, I guess we'll say in probably three or four years. Um, uh, it got, it was very, uh, political actually. Um, I, because of the stuff that I did with that guy, uh, Jason Belmonte, um, like he, he, uh, was a, a brand sponsor. Like he was a sponsored athlete for, for his particular bowling brand. <laughs> <laughs> that that happened to not be very popular in my community. So anytime I would go to a bowling alley with like, I would get free bowling balls because I beat the guy a game, you know, like it kind of was like a bit of an embarrassment to him um, that uh, the, the company ended up sending me bowling balls and they wanted me to like continue on with <laughs> like bowling. So uh, that was cool for a little while. And then like, I, I got really, really good at bowling. Like I was averaging like 235, 240. Um, wow. And uh, it just started getting weird because like other bowlers would be like, oh, you're bowling with storm bowling balls. I feel like such a nerd even saying this. Like it's just, like, <laughs> it was so, it was so weird. Like they were, they were very competitive. Like I still get like death threats in, in my, like my Vin Gerard Facebook from people that wanted to bowl me. Um, and like, uh, there's definitely a market there as a, if any pro wrestling promoters are listening, if you want to like attract a new audience, go after bowlers because I believe that they think wrestling is still real. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> if you watch like that promo, I cut on them. Like they, they legitimately think that what I was saying, I really felt in my heart that, that that's, that's the truth about bowling. Um, and they believed everything. And, and, uh, 
it, you read some of the comments on on any of those videos it's pretty it's pretty insane the, there's the a whole human being <laughs> there's a rat hole here because i'm just even those seem to suggest it along with the video i'm showing here the one that, that it's like the third thing when you you look up your wrestling name uh i'll answer your message from jason belmont pba bowler uh the truth about the vin gerard video like this was this is a i didn't realize how deep of a thing this was when i stumbled on it earlier today <laughs> yeah i remember i remember when uh quack uh first got wind of it and like it was like i hadn't talked to quack in probably six months at that point um because i I had left wrestling and and it just this just so just so happened right after i was done with wrestling i was in like a a summer bowling league with just some friends and uh i remember quack it was like quack called me on the phone and asked me um he's like this this like has has the ability to be the next Andy Kaufman stuff, <laughs> and like <laughs> we tried we tried convincing Jason Belmonte to let me like break his hand, you know, like like <laughs> like ridiculous stuff we're trying to get him to do, and uh, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't having any of it. Wow, you can you can watch that. Just look up bowling and Vin Gerard, and you're gonna find that anyway. <laughs> the, 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 the entire bowling match is up here. This is great. <laughs> yeah we're gonna i think we're gonna take it down put it on the powerbomb tv network because uh, a lot of bowlers are, are on the the lookout for it yeah absolutely <laughs> there's definitely in demand for it well thank you so much it's been a pleasure uh, uh chatting with you here uh tell them one more time uh where they can find out everything uh about the event and the service yep you can go to powerbomb.tv uh for more information about uh starting a subscription you get a 10 days free um and I believe you're you're coming really close to uh, getting break the barrier for free if you get a free trial in the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. Uh, break the barrier being Sunday, June 11th, starting at 3 p.m. The first hour of it will be streaming live through Powerbomb TV's Facebook page. Every hour, every hour thereafter will be exclusively through Powerbomb.tv. So if you want to check it out for a little bit and see what it's like, go there. Um, and I hope as many people as possible will check it out live streaming on powerbomb.tv because uh, it's one of those make or break type of things for us. So uh, thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity and thank you for having me here. No problem. Go check it out. Sounds like a fun event. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Vin Gerard, for being a part of the show. Uh, if you guys are out there, if you check out the show, please let us know what you think of uh, Powerbomb TV and Break the Barrier. I'd like to hear your uh, feedback on, on that as well. And, and please check it out. Support indie wrestling has been the mantra of the show uh, for, for as long as we've been doing it. Uh, so uh, thank you again to our guest. Uh, check out everything. Subscribe to everything on WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including the Indie Mayhem Show and so many other things that we're doing uh, uh, to talk and support wrestling of all different shapes and sizes. Uh, and until next time, support indie wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.